Hello everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to the strange, the bizarre, and the unusual. I like it. This is Roger Hansen, and I am here to give you a review of a ghost story that we just began called The Dibbit Box. This is actually not about the Dibbit Box. Uh, it's being discussed pretty thoroughly in the story. Um, but. I am going to do a review on the Dybbuk, which we did research right after listening to the story, and it's pretty interesting. I wanted to find out, first of all, where the Dybbuk originated, and when I went to check it out, I first went to the Jewish Virtual Library on the internet. and. I found a short commentary in, in the virtual library mentioning the Dybbuk, but there is no Jewish text, actual religious text that mentions the Dybbuk at all. I thought that that was interesting, so I did some further research and I found an old early 20th century black and white without any sound movie that was in German about the Dybbuk. It's writ or it's pretty old and it's pretty informative if you sit back and watch it if you're into that kind of thing. But that was where the Dybbuk really hit big it was a, a hit in Germany and after that I did some further research and I found out that the Dybbuk is an old German Jewish mystic folklore and it originated out of the German ghettos with housewives and house mothers who were very superstitious and if anybody out there doesn't know what Jewish mysticism is it's pretty interesting um, the mysticism actually originated out of the Ottoman Empire when Constantinople was still going and it was the Byzantine Empire Jewish people usually the ones who were expelled from Sp Spain would travel into that area and that's where they held up after they were expelled out of a lot of countries in Europe well anyhow that is where the majority of it came from uh, I did some research and I found an old Jewish rabbi about that was alive maybe about two three hundred years ago and he's the one that really got the the mysticism within the Jewish beliefs going pretty strong he wrote a lot of uh, writings that dealt with the mysticism and there was even a book that came out that had little stories of folklore and you learned about things like the golem and the dibbit and other mystical creatures like that <clears throat> now when I speak of Jewish mysticism don't get it mixed up with Kabbalah. Kabbalah is not the form of mysticism that I'm speaking of. If you want to get a good idea of the different kind of major Jewish mysticisms that took place, I would suggest checking out uh, Gershom Shalom's um, book it's called the major trends in Jewish mysticism it was written in 1941 it distinguishes between different forms of mysticism 
during different eras of Jewish history and you know Kabbalah is one of them don't get me wrong but there's more out there now the majority of references when it comes to the mysticism that I'm speaking of when you go to look for it with like the Jewish library virtual library or with any kind of Jewish text or speaking to a rabbi they'll always stay away from it because it, a lot of them are ashamed of the folklore that's risen up because of the Kabbalah the Kabbalah was pretty much hijacked by Christians and made into something that was m mystical and magical and today you'll find a lot of symbols that came from the Kabbalah in, on tor Torah cards and things like that you know that people are using to read fortunes and things of that nature and that's all because it was hijacked from the Kabbalah and used in a lot of Christian beliefs the Freemasons were pretty notorious for that they they actually did that during the Renaissance and the Enlightenment eras but the mysticism that I'm talking about if you really want to read about it it is actual fact okay this is 100 percent German Jewish mysticism folklore real or not that's not for me to decide but it was believed in Germany um, like I said if you want to check it out there's a reference you can check out and it's a book called Lilith's Cave um, it's Lilith's Caves uh, Jewish Tales of the Supernatural and the book was written by Howard Swartz now this book contains stories it's uh, created from uh, sources of medieval rabbis and it's filled with Jewish folklore Hasidic texts and oral traditions you know, these uh, are pretty interesting stories it, they not only talk about the Debek but they talk about the Golems uh, the Succubus Lilith uh, the story of Lilith is interesting the old 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 traditional folklore from thousands of years ago about Lilith was she was the first bride of Adam and she turned away from Adam and because she turned away from Adam she was forsaken by God <clears throat> and she became a succubus <clears throat> now old women and mothers would scare their children by telling them that if they didn't behave or they didn't do their chores or they didn't study that Lilith would come in the night and kidnap them young ladies were told that or believed that if they didn't do things the right way then Lilith would come and steal their children and sacrifice them it eventually evolved to where Lilith was not only a succubus but she was a female vampire too and a lot of the traditional paintings and stuff during the Renaissance and the medieval times if you notice they're red-headed people that are the bad guys portrayed in the paintings Lilith was portrayed as the redhead there's a whole whole side of mysticism that goes into that area and this is where I'm speaking of when I talk about this the the Dybbuk the Dybbuk comes from that form of German Jewish mysticism and folklore and it's pretty interesting I really wish I could find out more and get that book that's 
one of the books that I really have wanted to look at and I haven't been able to find much information on it well I really haven't had time to go to it because I'm always looking at different information and stuff but it's really good uh, I would suggest checking it out and if you guys know anything else and you would like to contribute and talk about it you know feel free to let me know what you know and share because I think it would be interesting to talk about I uh, also wanted to mention too that uh, you know the book Lilith's Cave it has uh, a lot of Jewish variants it has you know things like uh, the Pandora Persephone's myth and you know the fisherman and his wife the sorcerer's apprentice Bluebeard and several tales from the middle age that have never uh, been published uh, if you guys are interested in those kind of things then you need to check it out you know well, I'm gonna get off of here I really wish I had more information but I really don't I will talk to you later bye